Okinawa, Japan, an island crossroads in the South China Sea. It's the birthplace of the world's most popular and brutal martial art, karate. We're going to immerse ourselves in this ancient art and follow its roots back to the time of the samurai. We'll experience its toughest training, learn its deadliest secrets, and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a black belt. There are hundreds of distinct fighting styles in the world. They are practiced in every nation and by every people. Now, Jason Chambers, a mixed martial artist and professional fighter. And Bill Duff, a former pro football player and wrestler. Are embarked on a mission to explore the history and techniques of these incredible martial arts. And at the end of each journey, one of these two warriors will face the ultimate test. They'll try to survive a real fight with a true human weapon. This is the 14th annual All Okinawa Karate Championships at the Budokan Martial Arts Facility in Naha City, Okinawa. Really going at it. Oh my god. It's like a mincemeat out of his chest. Look how intense he looks, too. There's no wraps, there's no protective gear. These guys are beating the living hell out of each other. There are several different styles of karate with histories dating back more than 500 years. That could be you in there, please. We're watching one called Kyokushin. Kyokushin is a modern style famous for kumite, a kind of full contact sparring. And don't let the white robes fool you. With no pads or protective gear, this kind of fighting is as brutal as a bar fight. And the goal is similar too. Beat your opponent to the mat. Most kumite fights are built around just a few key moves. Low kicks, straight punches, high kicks, knee strikes, and forearm blocks and strikes. These are the main weapons of a Kyokushin fighter. Punches or chops to the head are not allowed in a kumite. But bone crunching kicks are. Oh! Oh! oh Five more awesome. seconds. Uh, he did it? about four kicks to the face. After the fight, we met up with Shishinoe Sensei, a seventh degree Kyokushin karate black belt and four time heavyweight national champion. He had a challenge for us. Sensei just says, go and visit several dojos on the island, gain some more practice. You're welcome to have a fight with one of his students. A kumite fight? Yeah, a kumite fight. So if we proved him that we're good enough, we're going get, to get to have an actual kumite fight with one of his students. First, you have to show that in your training. Our kumite will be with Masaki Shimajiri, a second degree Kyokushin black belt and the reigning champion of the Kyokushin Union World Tournament. He's kicked butt all over these islands, and he's going after one of us next. The Kyogoshin seems really brutal to me. A lot of punches to the chest, a lot of kicks to the legs. I just have to really condition my body to come up with a way to block these little fast guys and uh, figure out how to win a fight. Though most people think of karate as a Japanese martial art, it really isn't. It's Okinawan. And because Okinawa sits midway between Japan and China, karate owes a debt to both Chinese Kung Fu and Japanese Jiu Jitsu. In the 15th century, the island now known as Okinawa was called the Ryukyu Kingdom. One of the wealthiest kingdoms in Asia, Ryukyu carried on trade with places as far away as Java. But it did most of its business with China, trading textiles, silver, and herbs. But they didn't just trade goods, they also traded knowledge of martial arts, including several varieties of kung fu. 
and it was the combination of Chinese Kung Fu and the native martial art called Tei that led to the creation of karate. But Japan did play a key role in karate's history. In 1609, the Satsuma clan of samurai conquered the Ryukyuan kingdom. Under their sometimes oppressive rule, karate became the common people's only defense. Though Okinawa kept its own language and culture, it was essentially a colony for almost 300 years. Then, in 1872, the Japanese government made Okinawa officially a part of Japan. To integrate themselves, the Okinawans adopted the Japanese language and tried to make their native martial art more Japanese. They even changed its name. Before the 19th century, karate was often called kodate, meaning Chinese hand. But around the turn of the 19th century, its name was modified to the more Japanese sounding karate, meaning empty hand. They made a few other changes to make karate more Japanese too, as we found out when we got our training uniforms. The karate gi isn't original to karate. It's actually derived from the Japanese uniform of judo, but it is very functional. Loose, tough, and flexible for fighting. Okay. Yeah. In karate, the belt designates rank by color a system adopted from judo in the 1920s in another effort to encourage the Japanese to accept karate. The darkening colors, from white to black, are believed by some to symbolize the darkening of the belt with age and experience. Even though we've trained in a lot of different fighting styles, when it comes to karate, we're still beginners, which means our belts would be white. I'm gonna try my gi, I'm Yeah, fine. your turn. Okay. This tie over here, right? Does this have a good snap to it? Ooh, you hear that? Nice. How's it, how's it back? It looks like it hangs well. Looks good. With our new geese, we were ready to begin the training that would ultimately lead us to fight a black belt Okinawan champion. Really loose. And we had come to the right place. Naha City is not only the capital of Okinawa, it's the world capital of karate. There are over 400 world-renowned karate dojos spread across this tiny island, 122 of which are based right here in Naha City. And it was from Naha that karate spread across the globe. In 1945, Naha was the site of the largest amphibious assault in the Pacific theater of World War II. Almost half a million U.S. soldiers stormed the beaches here. But most of the soldiers they faced were Japanese. The Okinawan civilians were caught in the middle. After fighting that caused hundreds of thousands of deaths, the Marines defeated the Japanese, and US forces occupied Okinawa until 1972. And it was those US soldiers who began training in Okinawan karate and eventually carried it back home to the States. Today, it's practiced by more than 50 million people making it the most popular martial art in the world. Now, many foreigners come back to Okinawa to get closer to the source of karate. Places like Shishinoe Sensei's Dojo. I am the moped champion. You win. Savor your victories. They come few and far between. <laughs> The gary, or kick, is a key karate strike. Because the legs are roughly four times more massive than the arms, they can deliver a lot more power when they land. Aimed high, they can deliver enough force to cause a concussion. Aimed low, they can bring an opponent to his knees. Which is why we started with Gadan Mawashigiri. You use your shin bone. Yes, yes. A quick snap strike. It's a low kick aimed at the opponent's thigh. Yes, up, down, up, down. 
So what did he mean by up down? That you start from up and you go down. So, it's, oh, it so comes like, out more oh. powerful. That's Downwards? it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Because of my MMA training, I've used similar kicks to destroy legs in the ring. Oh, baby, baby. It's a great move for a stand-up fight. So the, the outer one is a, is a round movement, but the inner one is a straight movement. You go just straight directly to the inner thigh. Because the bone of the thigh is the strongest in the body, you probably won't break a guy's leg with this kick. Should I transfer my foot here to kick, or am I just lifting the leg? But a good low kick can hit the femoral nerve, causing intense pain. Okay, okay. The kick's power comes from the snap of the knee. The snap is created when the quadricep, the largest muscle in the body, contracts and pulls the tendon connecting to the foot over the knee. Using the knee as a pulley, the strength of the quad is enough to accelerate your foot to speeds close to 30 miles per hour. A solid low kick can deliver about as much force as being stomped by a bull. I think the low kick is going to be where I'm at. I'll be able to take their legs out quick. I can throw a lot of power behind it with my weight. And I'm sure no one here is as strong as me, but they're all faster than me, which sucks. But what am I going to do? While we were still getting the hang of the low kick, Shishinoe Sensei taught us another great move, his signature strike, the Jodan Mawashigiri. You made a turning movement, knee up. Just like snaps his leg out? Yes, you snap your leg out and bring it back the same way. In this powerful high kick, the attacker swings his foot in a wide upward arch towards the side of the opponent's head. At the greatest point of extension, the instep is slammed into the temple at 40 miles per hour. Because the area of impact is focused on a small part of the foot, it magnifies the force of the blow, making it capable of dropping 1,000 pounds of force on your head. It's like getting whacked in the head with a Louisville slugger. used to the high kicks. Um, Jodan Mwakiri stuck from my kick, so I like it. It's pretty good at the low kicks, but these I think because I'm a little more flexible, a little more limber, and um, I think they're a funny kick right to the head. So these are something that I think I'm going to be able to really utilize a lot when we have our kumite fight. These uh, kicks are so technical, and everything they do, they change it around. A top heavy guy like myself, it's very difficult to uh, get all the technique down, especially on the high kicks. It's very strange for me, from my background, to be throwing kicks and snapping your foot at someone's head. It's extremely difficult. Our kicks were starting to work. But to make a stand in a real fight, we'll need something more. A strike that goes all the way back to the warrior guards of the Ryukian kingdom. No place on earth played a more pivotal role in the history of karate than Shuri Castle. It was from this castle that in 1477, the Ryukian king Shoshin ordered a sword hunt, which meant all weapons in the kingdom had to be rounded up and brought to the castle. His goal was to prevent rebellious nobles from challenging him. Incredible. Our training would begin in the gardens near Shuri Castle. Here we met Higa Sensei, an eighth degree black belt. His students were already performing a kind of training known as a kata. Kata is a practice uh, by yourself. This is uh, also your concentrations and muscles and the spiritual training. So it's basically like a fake fight? Just right. If when you hey. practice the kata uh, again and again, again your on. muscle remembers the uh, movement. Oh. It turns out that doing hundreds of reps of a kata builds muscle memory. It literally changes the way your neurons in your brain grow. Eventually, you can do these moves without thinking at all. And as we both know from other fights, thinking is the enemy. In a fight, you just have to react. And kata gets you ready. 
After absorbing the basic flow of the kata, it was time to start training. Can you teach us some blocks? We began by learning the primary block of this style of karate, called shurite. Named for Shuri, the ancient capital of Ryukyu, Shurite is thought by some to be the art closest to the original Okinawan martial art of Te before it was influenced by Chinese Kung Fu. A form of it may even have been used by the warriors of the Ryukyuan king Shohashi when he battled to unify the kingdom in 1429. Though battles were fought with swords, spears, and bows, a weaponless warrior still needed some way to battle his enemies. Shohashi's men may have used a predecessor to Shurite. Shurite's emphasis is on simplicity. Straight punches and hard blocks. Efficient and effective. Just what we needed. So he's clubbing down on my, on my bone. Yeah, I can feel that in my nerves. This block is the Uchi Uke, or forearm block. Using the elbow as a fulcrum point, the defending forearm is slashed in a downwards arc, basically attacking the soft muscles on top of your opponent's forearm with the hard bone of your own. The block works by taking the opponent's blow at an angle, which deflects the energy of the blow away from the vulnerable torso. The harder you block, the further his blow will be deflected, and the more open he'll be to a counter strike. Not, a big not a push. Like, no. Strike. Yeah. It's a strike. Oh. That's right. Wow. So he's kind of using his defensive move as an offensive move. It's not like he's taking him and sneaking in for a second. He's not pushing. It's striking the arm, right? Oh, okay. So it's more of an it's an offensive move too. Believe me, that's a strike in the arm. My forearms are. Yeah. Is it normal to have sore forearms, or are we just really bad? <laughs> Big welts. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's much better. That, that helps. That helps a lot. Yes, that's that's great. Here, show him. No, no. Thanks. Hours of rigorous training left our forearms battered, but feeling like we've learned something we could use. Of course, you can't win a fight with a block. Now, we needed a counter strike, and Sensei had the perfect one. The Seiken Shokuzuke, or straight punch. This is the cornerstone punch of all ancient Okinawan karate. Ah. Strong. Sharp. It starts with the fist in a ready position. From there, the punch is thrown directly to the midsection of an opponent. But the key is rotating your fist 180 degrees right before it strikes the intended target. The twisting snap of the arm maximizes the speed of the punch and magnifies the force of the blow by concentrating the impact on the first two knuckles of your hand. Done correctly, it can deliver as much energy as a bowling ball dropped from the top of a house, more than enough to cause soft tissue damage or break a rib. Right, is he rotating starting from the hip to rotate, or is he coming out straight and then rotating the last couple inches? Whip. Oh, so, so it's not, it's more of a whip. No. If you, like this, this punch, just push. Right. So just a little bit like this, quick. Twist it. Oh, so it's more like the end of the punch is what whips more like a whip. He said, so if you're going here, you're more pushing it here. It's Whipping. Gotcha. Okay. Practice time. No punching bags for us. To build our skills, the training tool of choice was this, a makiwara board. A simple wooden strike board wrapped with rice straw and rope. The makiwara has offered karatekas a way to practice their art for half a millennia. Give it a hit. Good. The power we're able to create by simply rolling our fist, it's uh, really a good counter strike. And I think it's going to be really practical and it complements the Kyokushin kicks that we learned earlier. That really beats the heck out of your knuckles <laughs> hitting that board. But our conditioning is just beginning. To prepare our bodies for the punishment of the fight, we're going to experience what might be the most dangerous training in the world.
Full Contact Karate is all about punishment. We've been learning how to dish it out. Now, we're going to get smacked, beaten, and pushed to our limits to learn how to take it. We head north to Zakimigusku, a 600-year-old mountaintop fortress in the center of the island. Built by rivals to the Ryukian kings and Shuri, castles like these were the sites of battles of Tay-trained Okinawan warriors. You see what I'm seeing, Bill? I see it. What we were seeing was Shinjo Sensei in action. A nine-time world champion and Oichi Ru master, Shinjo Sensei is known as Okinawa's Superman. It was easy to see why. Shinjo Sensei was putting his students through something called iron body training. He's really pounding him. Yeah. To toughen their bodies, he repeatedly strikes them open-handed blows to the back, shoulders, thighs, and forearms, and even full force closed fist punches to the gut. But that was just a warm-up. That's a human weapon right there. For anyone who doesn't think this is real, Take a look at that. Solid wood. This is the one that was broken across the abdomen muscles of a man who's half my size. Yeah, these are these are thick boards too. These aren't fake wood or light wood. I mean they, you can tell where the screws have been in these things, and these things were supporting something. That's intense. Now it was our turn to take a beating. Ever since unarmed Karatekas faced armed samurai warriors, physical toughness has been considered a key to victory. Sensei believed in order to survive our fight, we'd need to learn how to take a punch, or a lot of them. It's very difficult to stand there and let a man hit you and not hit back. Believe me, there's nothing pulled. Every punch comes hard and it comes quick. You're just gonna take a beating. Start turning on the jars. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Strong hands have always been vital in karate. So to strengthen our fingers, Sensei had us train the way people on this island have for centuries. Lifting and holding 50 pounds stone urns, once used to carry rice wine. Step. And two. Three. Each. Me. We wondered why he focused so much on fingertip strength until he showed us. He just broke three boards with his thumb. The power of the strike was incredible. Two boards shattered with just the tip of his fingers. Because the striking surface of the tips of the fingers is so small, it greatly magnifies the pressure of the blow. At the very point of impact, the amount of force could be up to 12 times the force of a full-on punch. If you were to hit somebody with that in the throat or between the ribs at a pressure point, you could absolutely kill them. It's a death touch move. But this wasn't just a demonstration. It was the beginning of a lesson designed to show us the importance of strengthening the hand. <laughs> All of his students are laughing at us like, geez, this is a prank he always does. I think I need to uh, concentrate here, buddy. Oh, crap! See that board? It's much better. Uh, yes, that hurt my fingers. Horrible. This way. Yes. <laughs> Just think, if you did it, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. That's if cool. my finger points this way and that way, you're fighting in all the shows. Nah. Ah. 
That really hurt too, though. <laughs> oh, How's gosh. your fingers feel? Oh, it feels great. In, if you watch that in slow-mo, my finger went <laughs> And our punishment wasn't over. Time to toughen up our wrists and forearms for the kind of blows we'll be taking in the fight. Yeah, my forearms are totally blasted now. Yeah, it really messes you up. The bones, the tendons, you can feel it all crunching. You can really see how tough they are from doing this like repeatedly back and forth. Some. Ah, I keep stepping in. Years of training are required to forge a true iron body. Some. Back. But our time with Sensei prepared us for the next technique. I can feel it. One that could be a big help in our upcoming match. It's called Kote Uchi, or wrist bash. It's very deadly right there. Very it works by first grabbing an opponent's wrist or forearm with your defending hand. The attacking arm is then swung in a wide arc toward the intended target. Finally, the hard bone of the radius is slammed into the opponent's chest, neck, or shoulder. Because it swings through such a wide arc, the wrist is moving at speeds of up to 43 miles per hour. And since the radius doesn't deflect or compress nearly as much as a fist, it can deliver a staggering blow, like being hit with an ax handle or a baseball bat. To demonstrate the power of the Kote Uchi, Shinjo Sensei did something incredible. I'm gonna go over there. Don't do that to me, please. Look at that. That's crazy. You should yeah, have felt impressive. the power of this hit. Just holding it. I mean, I've held on to 350 pound men in football, and I could barely hold the bat when his wrist came through there. It came through with such power and force and just shattered this thing like a toothpick. Unbelievable. In a fight, this move could easily generate enough force to crush the soft tissue of an opponent's throat or even fracture a vertebrae. I need. The wrist bash would be a great addition to our karate arsenal, an excellent complement to our low kicks, high kicks, blocks, and punches. But we have a lot more to learn before the final fight against the black belt. Which is why we're headed back to Naha City to learn karate's deadliest secrets from one of the world's most famous masters. We were running out of time to prepare. Soon, one of us was going to have to face off against a karate champion in a real kumite. Now, we're headed back to Naha City to immerse ourselves in the sport's warrior origins. The man who will train us is a ninth degree Gojo Ru black belt, Higaona Sensei. He would take us beyond the sport of karate and reveal its deadliest techniques. Sensei, may we join your dojo? This was an incredible honor and our last chance to put everything we had learned together into our final fight plan. Sensei began our training by working on our inside, a breathing exercise called Makso. The goal is to focus the mind before training. He explained that the balance of the hard external and the soft internal is essential to the practice of karate. Breathing is for your inside body condition. And then your body has balance. If you have too much power outside and you forget about the inside, you're still weak. But it wasn't just breathing exercises. 
So this is the training with the rock. When it came to physical training, Sensei liked to kick it old school. And we mean old school. They are bringing a boulder out into the middle of the floor. Sink. When America was still just a British colony, karate British. fighters were here, toughening their hands on rocks, just like these. In every village, there was a rock for training with. And then back of the hand. From the look of it, it may have even been this rock. Aye! Aye! His hands are about as hard as the rocks. It's strong. It's very impressive. He says he practices every day. I can see that. You know, for a guy who's almost 70 years old to be that strong, that's absolutely incredible. The way he trains his hands, pounding stone, the way he trains in a no-frill gym. This guy is like Rocky of Okinawa. This is a tradition. We exercised our shoulders and back muscles with a 15-pound weighted lever designed to strengthen the critical muscles around our joints. Next, we tossed around stone weights to develop our grip and coordination. To strengthen their fingers, karatekas worked out with bamboo stalks. Our goal was to stab our hands all the way through a bundle of bamboo reeds. Really hurts the fingers. Bill, give it a shot. It's harder than it looks. Basically, it's like running full speed through a forest. You're bound to hit something, and when you do, it hurts. Ah! <laughs> you gotta keep your hands really tight. But like the iron body training, every part of Hagona Sensei's training was designed to make us tougher, harder, ready to face our opponent. Oh, very good. The exercise pushed us to our physical limits, which is just what Sensei said it should be. So look, listen, sweat. As we walked to a nearby temple, Sensei explained the history of this kind of training. In 1609, an army of Japanese samurai from the Setsuma clan invaded the Ryukyuan kingdom. Despite a few fierce battles against the karate-trained Okinawans, the samurai were victorious. After their victory, they made it illegal for Okinawans to own weapons. Then they went one step further and outlawed karate. So karate went underground, and students began to practice their martial arts in secret, at temples like these. And it was in a village near here that one of karate's legendary figures first made his stand. In a small village near Shuri, a samurai tried to abduct a young girl. A local warrior named Kosaku Matsumori saw the trouble and came to her rescue. Unarmed, but using the techniques of karate, Matsumura stripped the samurai of his weapon, leaving him in disgrace. For his skill and bravery, Matsumura became the patron saint of karate. The sensei's techniques were closely related to those of the Ryukis. Back then, they had to kill. And that's what he was going to teach us. This wasn't karate as a sport. This was karate as warfare and self-defense. The moves were dirty, brutal, and violent, designed to kill or maim. That's not nice. <laughs> so what's happening is I'm blocking the kick and I'm bringing up a knee. At the same time, he doesn't want me to put it back down. He wants me to come back and trip behind the knee. Right here, bam, back trip. Mm. And place my knees inside of his and punch him in the cross. This has really been able to put the, the roof on our karate house and give us a full interior and exterior. So we have our breathing and our interior and our, you know, the inside of the house. And then we have all the exterior features too, the hard strikes, conditioning of the body. It gives us the full package going into a kumite fight. 
Our day of training complete, we finished with more meditation. We hope to clear our minds and heal our bodies so we'd be ready to experience the pain all over again. The master's conditioning was the toughest we'd ever experienced, but it was working. At the end of it, Sensei honored us by demonstrating one of karate's deadliest secrets. Inside a private temple, he showed us Kyushu, the ancient art of vital point striking. So from here, an explanation about the vital points. They're a very important part of martial techniques, very dangerous. Developed from a sacred 380-year-old karate scroll called the Bobishi, Kyoshu was kept a secret for centuries and only taught to students a master deemed the most worthy. According to Sensei, Kyoshu is based on exploiting the same meridians used in acupuncture, attacking specific nerve clusters on the body to bring intense pain or even death. Sensei showed us how to stop a heart with a precisely aimed palm strike. When you hit, put power in your thumb. So training, you would never hit the heart because it's dangerous. It shocks the heart. Though Kyoshu is based on the Eastern idea of energy fields in the body, there's evidence that a single strike to the heart could be deadly. In 2005, an 18-year-old hockey player died after being struck in the chest with a puck about the same force as one of the master's palm strikes. Same hand, same hand. Same hand. Yes, same hand. If you actually hit somebody with this move repeatedly, there's a really good chance they're never gonna get up again. So taking it into a kumite isn't a great idea, but learning it, uh, I feel kind of honored. We had come to the heart of karate, not as a sport, but as a true martial art. <laughs> Sensei had revealed that karate was the ultimate expression of the warrior spirit of the Okinawan people. It was time for one of us to put that spirit to the final test. But before we left, Hageona Sensei honored us with some final words of wisdom. You yourself. To trust yourself. I, I can. I cannot know. I can. Any. I can. I can. And the fall, the back. But if you win, if you lose, it's all part of your training. It's all learning experience. Be careful and do your best. Good luck. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it was solid advice. Tomorrow, we'd have a chance to put it and all our training to the ultimate test because one of us is going to face off against a champion in a full-on Kumite showdown. Bill and I have been kicked, punched, and thrown around by some of Okinawa's greatest karate masters. Now, it's time to take what we've learned into the ring for the ultimate test. We grabbed our gear and headed back to the Budokan in downtown Naha to face our kumite. As we entered, our opponent, Masaki Shimajiri, was sparring with a partner. The sensei was waiting to see which one of us was going to step up to the plate. I'll tell you, I feel like through all my training, I really picked this stuff up quick. I felt like the senseis were right there with me, and, and they thought I picked it up. What do you think? Are you feeling it, huh? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling, feeling it. it. I feel like I got everything I needed through the training. I feel like I'm strong. I feel like I'm ready. So if you don't mind. Hey, if you're feeling it, I'm all down, man. Do it. Cool. Makes proud. It's nice to see the senseis here. 
I could see in their eyes that they were um, proud that we would step this far into their culture and their history and go ahead and take a challenge like this, take a challenge against one of their black belts. I was ready. This is what we've been training for. The official explained the rules. The fight would be full contact. It would go for one three minute round, followed by a one minute overtime. There would be no punches to the head. If one of us were knocked out, the fight would stop. If we were both standing at the end, it would be a draw. I wanted to win, but my goal was just to stay on my feet. Let's go, Bill. That was in. This thing was on. He hit me hard with a full force straight punch to the chest. No gloves to pad his knuckles. I could feel my ribs compress. Keep pressure forward, Bill. Punch. Hands up, punch. Punch, punch, kick. Bill was Hands taking off, incredible punishment. Shimajiri weighs almost 230 pounds. Each of his punches were landing with the force of a bowling ball being dropped from a tabletop. This was brutal. There you go, Bill. There you go. Man, this guy could take a punch. There you go. Finally, he got off balance, and I sent him to the mat. He bounced back up and came right back at me. His low kicks were punishing my legs, landing right on the femoral nerve. I was getting tired and a little sloppy. I nailed him in the jaw and got a talking to by the ref. Man, I had just ticked off a black belt, and he planned to make me pay. I'll go with kicks, Bill. You've got good kicks. Shimajiri came back and started working on my left leg, laying lightning quick low kicks to my inner and outer thigh. I was starting to lose my footing, but the clock saved me. But then, the ref signaled for a one-minute overtime. One minute. Last one minute. Okay. The amount of energy a three-minute, full-contact fight takes is incredible. Imagine a single play in football that went three minutes. I didn't have a whole lot left, but I leaned in and tried to land as many surete punches Yes. Again, push away, kick. The knee yes. strikes as I could before I dropped. Good, lift it up. Knee, right now, knee. Yes. This wasn't about style anymore. It was about survival. Yes, that's what I want to see. Go, back in, again. Punch, punch, kick. Mix up your ranges and your levels, Bill. No way I was going to stop now. Finish it up, Bill. Finish strong, finish strong. Right now, let's go. Come on, get back in there. Finish, finish, knee, kick. Let's go, we're almost there, Bill. We're almost there. Shimajiri came back with a vengeance. I didn't think I could take it. Five seconds, go, five seconds. Just get in there, Bill. Come on, let's go, let's go. But I made it to the end. Battered and bruised, but still on my feet. I had just fought a black belt to a draw. He hits hard. Man, am I tired. You know, I'm not a high kicker, he knew it. But lay some low kicks in. Some nice punches. So he's gonna be hurting tonight. A little bit of blood. Never hurt nobody. Come on, people. You know you love it.